Thank you very much, Kathy. I'm also so proud to see all, all of you here. But one way or the other derivatives of some of our ideas. This presentation <clears throat> is about safety. And uh, in the very beginning of this workshop, I gave a present of similar historical presentation from the psychological point of view. And I showed that people who were psychologists in the 30s thought about the safety of driving <clears throat> in and con conceptually they understood the same way the problem as we do now but they didn't have the mathematical erudition and development of all the <clears throat> all the control theory and game theory and everything that goes into the safety and uh, so they they couldn't quantify the whole problem of safety but conceptually they really understood that so in this lecture I collected papers, and I really tried to go to very origin of the papers that how the, the whole field mathematically and theoretically evolved. And then I show that, you know, the, 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 the mathematical evolution was not good enough because you really had to <clears throat> validate also with data. And uh, as you know, <clears throat> that the computational power was not was not always in coordinates with the mathematical development. So typically in this business, mathematics was ahead of the application. And the application came around and then, then they showed some holes and then the mathematics got improved. And so it's a kind of a, a um, spiral a collaboration between the theory and experimental people. So, <clears throat> so the control theory with control dynamics, and I somehow move. I don't know where. Ah, okay. Um, so, of dynamical system in engineered processes and machine, the objective is to develop a control model of controlling such systems using a control action in an optimal manner without delay or overshoot and ensuring control stability. And those of you who have been working in or taking courses in control theory know that there is the control process variables and then there is the reference set of points and then you have an error. And, and in fact, uh, you know, I will be jumping back and forth, but yesterday one of the military people talked about that, that it would be really desirable that a robot, as it goes on and makes an error, that it will recognize its own errors and it will, it will correct itself. Well, I was, last night I couldn't sleep and I was thinking about it, but how could I recognize the error if I don't know really what the what the reference point is. So you cannot really get error unless you have a reference point. Okay. So automatic control systems were first developed over 2000 years ago. So if you think that it's the last, you know, 100 years, it's not, it's last 2000. The first feedback control device on record is thought to be the ancient Tetsibios water clock in Alexandria, Egypt, around the third century before Christ. It kept time by regulating the water level in vessel and therefore the water flow from the vessel. This certainly was a successful device as water clocks of similar design were still being made in Baghdad when the Mongols captured the city in 1258 after Christ. A variety of automatic devices have been used over the centuries to accomplish useful tasks or simply just to entertain. And I had a, when Lily, when Lily still was a graduate student and Katie, of course, I gave a lecture, I don't know if you remember it, but I gave a lecture of history of robotics and I showed all these 
entertaining little devices that in the Middle Ages people were developing and, and showing them and in fact trying to make some money of this automata. An example of open loop control milestones among feedback or closed loop automatic control devices include the temperature regulator uh, of the furnace attributed to travel in 1620. So temperature regulators were one of the, the next kind of closest to our. So advances in control theory in 20th century control theory made significant strides over the next century. New mathematical techniques as well as advancement in electronic and computer technologies made it possible to control significantly more complex dynamical systems. And you would be surprised that actually a lot of our engineering advancement were due to military um, military activities. This really goes back to Napoleon, who started the L'Ecole Polytechnique because he understood that he needed engineers. But the, the last two wars, the First World War and the Second World War, also pushed science and engineering ahead. It's unfortunate that it has to be the wars that kind of push the engineering science. So in the 50s and 60s, followed by progress in stochastic robust adaptive nonlinear control methods in 1970s and 80s. Okay, so Rudolf Kalman, one when one speaks of history of control systems, one cannot avoid the name Rudy Kalman. I actually knew him. He was a difficult man, a Hungarian, very opinionated, but very smart. I refer to paper of Kalman, which he published in 1960 in Moscow. And there was a, the, the when you read the paper at the end, there is a little conversation between him and some Russians who were not always very kindly accepting his, uh, his results. But you know, in summary, he has shown the connection between observability and controllability, which is formalized by using the duality principle. Basically, that principle says what you cannot observe, you cannot control. In turn, this shows that the Wiener filter, which was, Wiener was an uh, elder than Kalman. Wiener was in the 19, um, 1840s at MIT, and Kalman came to, to MIT, I think, late 40s, beginning 50s. So, the, but there, there was a competition between the two men uh, the Wiener filtering and the prediction problem is a special case of Kalman's theory of optimization of linear deterministic control systems. The interesting note is this discussion between the Russian scientists. So our third, all my uh, next slides will be rela related to reachability and controllability of engineering systems because the reachability then leads to safety. And I noticed that uh, Pavon gave a talk on, on the subject and I think uh, Ram Vasudevan also talked about, and of course, Aaron Ames, who I will mention later on in the very first lecture of this week, gave a talk about safety. So, I mean, safety is of foremost importance in this transportation situation. The problem of reachability was originally suggested by Emilio Oscar Roxin in his PhD dissertation in 1958, folks. I mean, long time before we, 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 we knew it from University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. He investigated the reachable sets for nonlinear autonomous systems in which the control function appears linearly. So there, as I will take you through the different names, you will see that the progression was first linear systems, then nonlinear systems, then um, stochastic systems, and then finally uh, discrete uh, systems. Uh, 
Subsequently, others have explored controllable set for linear time invariant system with bounded impulse color control C. Look at this formula scheme. So he published it in 1967, so from 58, so it was 10 years later. Uh, <clears throat> Another variation of readable sets was carried out for time varying systems, which are linear with respect to state, but non-linear with respect to control. And this was by Lucien Neustadt in 1960s. So notice it was 58 in uh, Argentina, and then in the 60s, it's Lucien Neustadt, and then later, and this was an important paper, finally we used the paper by Thomas Petschwaradi, but K.S. Narendra. Narendra is a professor of control at Yale. He's still there, I believe. And he was a professor with uh, Kodicek and he had some, some very well-known students. However, the important part here is this Pechavaradi, who was a student who did reachable sets for linear dynamical systems published in Information and Control in 71. So I want you to notice that, you know, we go from 58, then we had 60, and then 71. So the, 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 the progress was, you know, took um, 58 to 71, almost, well, 50 years. This paper introduces rather rigorously the concept of reachable sets and reachable state. All right, so I go here through some definition, and when I show this to some of my students, they saw that maybe this is superfluous, but just to refresh your memory, so what is a reachable state? Because there is a reachable state, and then there is a reachable output, consider the system with initial. And so here are the definitions. So this XT is your reachable state, all right, which depends on the V and B, which are the, the state uh, uh, matrices. And then reachable set. So you have a reachable state, and then you have a reachable set which is the set of all these reachable states. So I will just not go too much. On. But the important part is that if you, take, if you take these states, and this is important to mention here because actually Praveen Varaya and a few others at Berkeley worked on these elliptic, in, elliptic integrals. And these elliptic integrals come about, you have two states, x1 and x2, and you are asking what are the energy constraints, then you get these ellipses. And in order to compute what the, the reachable set, the inside, you need to solve some elliptic integrals. And so there was there are several papers where as I said, um, Ravid Varaya and, and others spend considerable of their intellectual energy just dealing with elliptic integrals. All right, so there are too many results to give justice to review to control activi theory activities during 60s and 70s. Two observations. The scientists in 60s had very sophisticated analytical tools, actually, when I was young, and this is my time when I was a PhD student in Czechoslovakia in the 60s, you know, the control theories were really not considered engineers. They were considered as applied mathematicians, because if you look at all the, the journals in those days, there were no experiments and, of course, no simulation because the computers were not available at that time. So it was all equations. So the surface in order to deal with all variations of linear dynamical systems. What was missing are computational resources available, both memory and compute power, to deal with more complex real life problems, especially as they relate to computing large differential and partial differential equations. 
locally, I should mention activities by Zade. I don't know if you know, you probably know Zade as a fuzzy uh, set and fuzzy languages problem, but he, he came to Berkeley from Colombia and he was a prominent control person and Varaya and Dossier was a professor of, of um, he was the PhD professor of Shankar Shastri. <clears throat> so now we have to move to functional. So for those of you who are not as familiar, so, so functional is, is a function of functions within a certain, uh, within a certain interval. I wanted to show. And so then we pick a certain very particular functional, which is a state, the output and the velocity, the position y, y, with part of the output is y of x, and then the derivative, which could be interpreted as velocity of the state. So the goal is to find a output y that minimizes this functional within that particular interval using driving Euler equations. And so the mathematics is here that, and I had to do this to introduce you to the variational calculus because I, I wasn't sure that everybody knows what a variational calculus. So now you have this functional and then you add a, a variation with, within which is this functional can move around. And what you really are asking with this variational calculus is what is the partial derivative within this variation? And then um, this is what is thought that the mathematics involved is here. And then um, you, so we can, we can decompose it into two, two parts. And from that, this, we, we derive the very fundamental uh, kinem, um, energy equation of kine, kinetic equation and, and, um, and um, um, what's the, the potential, it's kinetic energy and potential energy, which is, which is really essential in thinking about control of any robots as you do and teach this in our course. So, so the so the reason I'm I'm talking about this is because you I have to get to the trajectory of this dynamical systems with respect to the velocity and position of the system, how it evolves. And it is this evolution, which of course is constrained with the energies that you have. That's why you have these elliptical uh, integrals there. But the, the what you really are after is the pass, actual pass ut, which is minimizes the action integral between the initial state, and so you get the the, act, the action integral, which is really the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. All right, so then in order to really, so until now, we talked about basically Euler-Lagrange equations, which talk about position, velocity, and acceleration. There is a different uh, formulation of the same thing is the Hamiltonian, which is instead of talking about velocity, talks about moments. And why Hamilton introduced this was because it's a more general representation of the energy balance between kinetic and potential energy that it scales to the relativity energy that Einstein introduced. So, so here is the Hamilton equations. And the reason I am showing this because all the work that, uh, that Claire has been pushing 
and the, the reachable sets uses this Hamiltonian representation. All right, so now I have to switch a little bit. And this is, of course, territory of Lily. So I'm just sort of introducing the differential games that are closely related to optimal control. While in optimal control, there is a single control UT and a single criterion to optimize in differential games. We have two controls because we have Historically, differential games have been played since 1925 by Ross, a mathematical theory of competition uh, published in American Journal of Mathematics. But the theory behind the games has been developed only later by Rufus Isaacs. And the reason I am mentioning this, because you will see in, if you go into this, you will see in many of the papers that Shastri and Tomlin and, and Papas wrote using this technology, they, they refer to this Hamilton Jacobi Isaacs modeling for safety control. All right, so now we come back to the optimal control views, and I already said that, but the optimal control can be also derived using Pontiac in maximum principle. A necessary condition also knows Pontiac in minimum principle or simply Pontiac in principle by solving Hamilton Jacobi Bellman equation as a sufficient condition. Now I can finally come back to the reachable sets. While much of control theory in the 60s was formulated for continuous functions, notice I I never talked about anything else. F of x, y of x, y dot of x, all continuous functions, okay? It was Dimitri Bertsekas in his PhD thesis in 1971. So notice 58, then we went to 60, then we went to 70 with Narendra and then Bertsekas 71, where he developed the concept of reachable sets. The results were presented in paper Bertsekas and Rhodes, who was his advisor on minimax reachability of target sets and target tubes, published in Automatica volume 7, 1971, where he addressed closed loop control of the discrete time systems in, pres in presence of uncertainty. This uncertainty arises as disturbance in the dynamics of the system or incomplete knowledge of the initial conditions. In all cases, we know that these disturbances lie in a given set. First, they drive the system state at final time to a prescribed target set under the worst combined disturbances. They, then they analyze how to keep the trajectories in the given tube target. So here is your tube, okay? So this is how you go through this initial x0, you see? And then, and you see these, these elliptical um, the cross sections through these tubes, and that's where this elliptical, and, and of course they are constrained with your energy that you have available E1, so forth and so on. So this is really the essence of, and so now with, with our, our, our cars, what you really want is that you want to stay within this tube, okay? But you have to, from the dynamics of the, the car, you can compute, and of course, knowing how much, the, the, what the dynamics is, you can compute trajectory, these boundaries. Okay. All right. So while the 70s have been quite productive in formulating the reachable sets and their application to safety, the 80s have been quite dry in producing results because the dimensionality curse hit the control community. And I, the reason I'm saying this, folks, that you always have to remember that the progress in science is going, your theory, then you 
implement, you hit the rule, then you push more the theory and then go to implement. So don't get frustrated if your current uh, devices or, or compute power just can do something in a limited context because, you know, the, the hardware and everything else progresses. Adaptive control, robust control, and feedback linearization were topics of high interest of researchers such as Padden, Kokotovich, Isidori, Varaya, Disor, and Sastri. On the other hand, the 90s turned out to be quite productive by new generation of researchers who took advantage of both better computational resources, but also robotic multi-degree freedom mechanisms. Somehow have pushed this. Yes, okay. Uh, <clears throat> which needed to be controlled in safe way. So the Shankar Shastri school in 90s to 2000, the time between 90s and 2000 has been quite productive for Shastri and his students. He had too many to list them all from this era. We just mentioned a few who contributed to the reachability sets. And they and you will recognize these names, at least some of you will recognize this name, Zhi Zhang Li, Richard Murray, John Ligeros, uh, George Papas, and Claire Tomlin. The nominal papers are below Ligeros, Tomlin, Shastri, and you can download them if you will. The, the original 99-98, you can see these uh, papers. Now, Claire Tomlin era starting in 2000. Claire Tomlin starting with her first PhD student, Jan Mitchell in 2002, described in the paper. Excuse me. Um, um, so Mitchell and Claire Tomlin, so they, did this over approximated reachable sets by Hamilton Jacobi projections and published in Journal of Scientific Computing. They developed and implemented a numerical tool based on the level set methods of Osher and Setien. And Setien is a professor, I don't know that Osher, but Setien is a professor in mathematics department here at Berkeley for computing these sets and they can accurately calculate them for a range of continuous and hybrid systems. Their method uses a lower dimensional hamilton jacobi Isaacs partial differential equation for each projection with a set of disturbance in. So here you have just pictorially shown visualization of the reachable sets. But you see again, because of the computational limits, they were able to just deal with, I believe they were able to go up to six or seven dimensions, so very limited. Next 20 years of Tom Tomlin's contribution, several students from her group expanded the idea of reachable sets and applied in dynamic games in transportation applications and expanding their complexity in terms of number of variable, i.e. their scalability. The students involved in this work were Alex Bayan, Hoshi Huang, Tio Gosh. I don't think I knew all of them, but I knew some. Later, the students turned to synthesis of these reachable sets increasing the scale and efficiency of the implementations so that it can test real life experiments. She had many students. I mentioned only a few, Hams Balakrishnan. Um, she is at MIT, Vaskander, Anil Aswani, Yang, Ding, Mo Chen. So these were all students who little by little uh, increase the scale of implementation. So most recent focus on Professor Tomlin's group were the, the David Fridovich Keel, 
in this paper, they are representing an updated predictive model of confidence in real time, which leads to more conservative motion planning. Rather than trust a model predictions blindly, they propose that robots should use the model's current predictive accuracy to inform the degree of confidence in its future prediction. See, there is this, and this, this question is still open, you know, how, how much you can trust your predictions. So the, the current predictive accuracy to inform the degree of confidence in its prediction is of critical importance. This model confidence inference allows them to generate probabilistic motion predictions that exploit model structure when the structure successfully explains human motion and degrade gracefully whenever the human moves unexpectedly. This is an example how to move from strict autonomy to human robot collaboration. So now, this was with these trajectories. So now you can, the, the, there are two other different approaches to this safety. And one is, which you probably heard if you were around the first day from Aaron Ames. This paper is a wonderful overview on how to design engineering systems that are safe. From theory point of view, the objective is to introduce control barrier function. So you see, it's not anymore in this reachable set, but control barrier function that play equivalent role to Lapunov function in the study of liveness property. The paper establishes the foundation of control barrier function. It assures safety via barrier function and stability via control Lapunov in context of optimization-based controller. Now, I have to tell you, since I am a good friend of Aaron, he gave me a bunch of these slides. So, and here are, again, the history of the safety of the barrier function. I, I was telling you this, the, the history of the reachability set. So here comes 1932, notice, the engine comes, then it goes to 1970s, the Redis on the Nakumo conditions, and so forth. So again, I think it's so important for you to understand that, you know, big ideas take time to develop. And that's why I am sort of so critical of people who publish I don't know, 80 papers per, per year or something like that, because you can't possibly uh, focus on, on and dig deep into difficult problems um, less than, if you are lucky, less than six or eight months. So anyway, that's my little spiel. Very functional lab with our function. That? Yes. Um, so uh, we're getting close to time. So um, okay. We... So I think I should. So you, you probably saw this, so I will go quickly through that. And then um, I just wanted to mention you heard yesterday probably from Ram. So he has a different way of thinking, thinking about the reachable sets of kinematic chains. So that's work. Anyway, so conclusion, it's hard to give justice to all the wonderful work on this subject. I admit I have been provincial in selecting papers for this review. I also limited myself to the subject of safety as one can derive it from dynamical systems. This topic has driven me from conviction that engineering systems must have guarantees of safety and performance. See, I, you know, a lot of these guys don't talk about performance, but to me, that's that they are coupled. As we move in transportation to autonomy in order to gain trust from the public, the above requirement becomes a necessity. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your, and thank you, Kathy, for reminding me. Mm -hmm.